In chapter one, we, we learned uh, dynamic memory allocations. So we know how to use uh, MLog and we know how to use free, right? So there were some issues about the memory management, right? So in this chapter, we are talking about arrays and structures. So first of all, we'll talk about dynamic memory allocation for arrays. Okay, so let's talk about one dimensional arrays first. So as you know, we have two types of memory allocations. So there, we can allocate memory space in two different ways. First, statical, statical memory allocation. And second one is dynamic memory allocation. So as I said before, if we have a static in a terminology, then it means, it means compiler knows what to do. Okay. And if we have a dynamic in the terminology, it means compiler has no idea what to do. So we have to run the code and we can, we can figure out at the runtime. Okay. So that's the big difference between static and dynamic. Okay. And when it comes to the memory allocation, static, static memory allocation actually allocate memory space from the stack. So do you remember when we have a memory architecture, like if this one is a memory space, then we have a stack and the free space and we have a heap. Okay, so the static memory allocation will get the memory space from the stack and the dynamic memory allocation will get the memory space from the heap. Okay, that's another difference between these two. Okay, so let's take a look at this first example, interlist 100. So the, it will allocate memory space. It will allocate 400 bytes. 400 bytes is coming from 100 times 4 because 4 is, is the size of integer. So 400 bytes will be allocated from the stack. Okay. And the next one is dynamic allocate allocated array. So we declare integer, uh, integer pointer variable list. Okay. And then this list will point 400 byte memory space in the, in the heap. Okay. So MLOG will allocate memory space like 400 bytes from the heap. And this list will point that. And uh, later, this list, the variable list should be deallocated by free, by calling free. Otherwise, we will have a memory leak problem. Okay. And after dynamic allocations, its use is almost the same as the statically allocated array. So let me ask you one question with this simple example. So we have a for loop where i goes from 0 to 99. Okay, and then we have one statement in the for loop. Okay, so now by looking at these only two lines, can you tell how this list was allocated? Was it statically or dynamically? We cannot tell because they look similar. They behave in a similar way when it comes to the operations like a store or retrieve. Retrieve means something like this, right? Something like uh, int k is li list three. So this one is about the retrieve. We will get the data from the, the value from this array. Or this one is actually uh, storing operations. So we are storing the value i into this array. Okay. So when it comes to the operations, there's no difference. But as I said, they are different. If we, uh, if we have integer array like this, it is array. But in this case, list is a pointer. So they are different. When it comes to the manage, uh, memory management, then they, they, they will behave in a different way. So as I said, this one will allocate memory space from the stack. Okay. And if we create the functions, which has these declarations, it, when we create the function, then this memory space will be gone. But if we have this uh, integer point of variable list with dynamic memory allocations, when we create the functions, then we will lose this integer point of variable list, but we will not, you know, this memory space from the heap will not go away. So that one is still allocated yet. But if we lose the address, then we will lose, you know, how to access that memory space. Otherwise, Otherwise, as long as we keep that address, then that memory space is still available, even when we create the function. So, you know, what I'm saying here is that when it comes to the operations, they look 
they operate in the same way, but when it comes to the memory management, they are different. Okay. Okay, so the next one, serial log. So for your information, a serial log, you can you can use a serial log to, to allocate memory space, but serial log is actually the combination of ML log and initialization. So if you want memory space with full of zeros, then instead of calling ML log, you can call serial log. Okay. Otherwise, ML log would be better. Okay. And the last but not least, the important question is why? Why are we talking about dynamically allocated array? Because you know sometimes we don't know the size of array at the compile time. If we know the the size of array at the compile time, then we can use this into list one hundred or two hundred. If we know the the size of array, then we can declare that. But sometimes we don't know the size at the compile time. The size is available only at the runtime. Then we need the dynamic allocated memory space. Okay. Then there is another reason to use dynamic allocated memory space because if we allocate memory space within the functions, then if we when we use when we want to use that memory space out of the function, then there is no other way, right? So static allocated memory space, static allocated memory space is available only in the functions, and out of the functions. It's not available, so we can use this dynamic allocated memory space for that kind of usage. Cool. Okay, so here is a one uh, simple example about allocating one D array. Okay, so in this example, it's really simple. So read a series of numbers from the user with this scanf. Okay, so with this scanf, we get one number which is the size of the array, okay? So first we get the number n, and then we allocate memory space with mlog. So list is, is here, integer pointer variable. List is pointing that n times four bytes memory space from the here, okay? And then we can read lots of numbers from the users with this memory space. Okay, the next one is two-dimensional array, which is quite complicated and this one is not that simple. Okay, so I need your full attention on this a couple of slides. Okay, so 2D is represented as a 1D array in the computer because in the memory space, we don't have two dimensions. We have, you know, you have just one dimensional arrays. So one byte and the next byte is following and the next byte and next byte and next byte. If you allocated a memory space for one integer, then four bytes from the memory space will be allocated in a row. Okay. So everything is actually a one dimensional. Okay. So for example, let's take an example of two dimensional array like this. So X is two dimensional uh, variable, array variable. Okay, then I think we're already uh, familiar with this pointer things, right? So this one is 2D array and X0 is a, an, a pointer, okay? And, okay, let me write down this one. It's actually, uh, this one is actually the, the address of this 2D array, the, the address of the first element of this 2D array. And that one is actually, right. Okay, so x0, is, the value of x0 is actually the, the address of the first element of this 2D array. So this one is pointing this one actually. Okay, and then we have five elements in a row and x1 is pointing this one and x2 is pointing and this one okay this is how uh, you know we this is what we have when we have a static allocations okay how about the 2d array with the dynamic allocations so this one is a little complicated than this one so first we have to allocate memory space for these pointers Okay, 
And when we allocate memory space, then we allocate the memory space in a row, in a sequential way. So we have a four integer pointers as an array. Okay, and then we have to allocate memory space for each pointer. Okay, so basically we have four memory blocks. One, two, three, four. Okay, that's how we allocate memory space for two dimensional. So here is an example code for uh, allocating 2D arrays. Okay, so first let's allocate a 2D array. So basically in the main functions, we want to use 2D array in this way. So first we have double pointer my array and this make 2D array will make a 2D array with uh, this size, 5 times 10. And my array will point then memory space. And then once we have this 2D array, then we can use this my array as a 2D array, like a, as if it is a statically located 2D array. Okay, so let's take a look at these functions, make 2D array. The return type is into the double pointer. Okay, and then we get the two numbers, rows and calls. Okay, and in the functions, we need one 2D uh, uh, double pointer x, and x will point some memory space. Okay, and <clears throat> this malloc will allocate, in this case, we are passing five for rows, so <clears throat> we will allocate memory space five times four bytes if the size of pointer is four bytes it depends on your system it might be eight okay so we allocate memory space this many this many bytes and x will point this memory space so it's like like this x is pointing uh, four elements and then the next one do you remember this one so x is pointing this array of pointers. Now we will allocate these memory spaces with the for loop. So for loop goes from zero to <clears throat> rows minus one. And the xi will point. xi means this one, this one, or this one, this one, this one, this one, okay? So they will point to some memory space, which was allocated by this, okay? So, <clears throat> We allocate, we allocate in this example, it is 10. So we allocate 10 by the double pointer, size of the double pointer is four. So actually we allocate 40 bytes for this one. So we allocate 40 bytes and this one will point this memory space. Okay. And then we repeat, we iterate this for loop rows times. Okay, so all the point, all the pointers will point its own memory space like this. Okay, and <clears throat> for your information, since <clears throat> x is double pointer, size of size of star x is actually size of int star. And the size of star star x is, is exactly the same as size of int. You see that? x is double pointer and star x is a pointer. This is pointer. So this one is same as this one. And since x is double pointer, star star x is integer. So this one is exact the same as this one. Okay. Next one is an example of deallocating to the arrays. So in the main functions, we, we want to use 2D array, dynamically allocated 2D array in these ways. First, we have a double point my array. And with these functions, we allocate memory space. And my array is pointing the memory space. And we can use this 2D array as you want. Okay. And once you are done with this memory space and 2D array, then we have to deallocate that memory space all the time. Remember, if you allocate memory space, then you have to deallocate the memory space. Otherwise, you will have problem. I mean, you know, in your homework, it's okay. You can you, you can 
you know, run your code without deallocating memory space. And your code will run really smoothly without any problem, noticeable problem. But that's really a terrible idea. Because you know, when you get a job as a program in a company, then if you forget the free, if you forget deallocating memory space, for 100% sure you will get a problem. Because you know, in your homework assignment, you don't need much memory space. Okay, so if you have a memory leak problem, your code can run so smoothly. You cannot notice that problem. Okay, so it doesn't mean that your code is it, your code has no problem. Okay, in a company, when you implement some things, then you know that's not just a tiny little homework assignment. So you have to handle lots of memory space. You have to handle lots of data. Then if you have a memory leak problem, then definitely you will you will have a problem. So once you allocate memory space, don't forget to deallocate. It's your, it's your responsibility. Okay. So let's take a look at this free to the array functions. So uh, let's assume that my array is pointing uh, array of integer pointer, integer pointers, and then each pointer is pointing memory space like this. Okay, so in you know in the allocating to the array functions, we allocated this part first, and then we allocated these blocks. But when we deallocate the memory space, we have to follow the opposite directions. Okay, basically we have to deallocate this one and deallocate this one, and then we have to deallocate this one. What if we deallocate memory space for this one first? Then we will lose all the address information about these blocks. Okay, then there's no way to deallocate this memory space. That's why we have to deallocate this part first and then deallocate this one. Okay, let's follow this code line by line. Okay, so we have integer variable. And then in this for loop, i goes from 0 to rows minus 1. So in this example, rows is 5. So in this for loop, we will call free with this one. Array i is this one. So array i is a pointer, right? So if i is a zero, then it means the first pointer. So with this first pointer, we'll call free. By that, we will actually deallocate this part. Okay, next. And with this for loop iterations, then we will deallocate all these blocks. And then finally, after after this for loop, then we have to free this one. Because array, you know, array is pointing this memory space, this block. So we will call free passing array. That's how we deallocate memory space compared to this allocating to the arrays functions here. So we allocate memory space for the first part, for this part, and then we allocate memory space with this follow-up. Okay, and when we deallocate, then we follow the opposite directions. 